again, this is Deb and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In the preceding section, we started work on creating our trip table for the Esprit de Tour Travel Company. And I have a few things that I want to point out before we move on, and that's related to indexing and keys. So as the content of the database grows, as the people are using the database, it can take longer to find what you need in a database. So really here, what I'm referring to is searching. So if you think about it, if you're going to book a trip, so maybe you're on a website and you want to book a trip, think about the things that you generally tend to search for when you're looking for a trip on a website. It might be that you search by a particular place name or trip type, or maybe you search by activity level. So if you want a particularly active holiday, you might search for trips that are active, or you might be more interested in the price of the holiday. So this is where indexing comes in, and indexing really improves performance when searching. So the last field we added was a code field. If someone wants to find this information about the trip and the code is not indexed, Access has to read through all of the trips in the trip table to find that specific code. However, if you do index the field, it means that access can essentially go straight to the trip with this code. So it's a lot quicker and it definitely improves performance as access isn't having to churn through loads and loads of trip codes searching. It can go directly there if you've indexed the field. And there's always a downside to these things sometimes. And the downside here is that in order to maintain these indexes, as data gets uh, modified or changed, this process tends to slow down the maintenance process, as in maintaining the data. And you'll see down in the bottom right hand corner, it shows a pop up about indexes. So it says an index speeds up searches and sorting on the field, but may slow updates. Selecting yes, no duplicates prohibits duplicate values in the field. Press F1 for help on index field. So if you do want to read a little bit more, definitely jump into that help file and have a little bit more of a read on indexing. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how do I decide if a field that I add needs to be indexed? And there are some technical considerations, but there are also business considerations. So for example, we've indexed the code and that's because it's a very important identifier. So that would be the sort of thing that you would want to index. An example of something you probably wouldn't want to index would be the description. So not many people would jump onto a website and search for a trip by its description. They're more likely to use maybe the code or the trip name or the price or something along those lines. So really think about that and it will determine whether you need to index that field or not. Now, the other thing to point out here is in the ID field. So I'm going to click on the ID field. And I don't know if you can see in this first column here, there's a little key symbol. And if you glance up at the table tools design ribbon, you can see that we have primary key highlighted in gray. So what that means is whatever the ID is, it's the main unique way that we identify a record in this table. Now let's move on a little bit and talk a little bit more about these views. So we're currently in design view and you can see that we have a contextual tab up here. So table tools and design, and that contains all of our commands. And some of these controls we're going to look at later on. But one of them that I want to draw your attention to is this property sheet. So if I click that, you can see I get that pane appear on the right hand side. I want you to note also that to the left of this button, we have some commands for inserting rows and also deleting rows. And I showed you earlier how you can switch to data sheet view. There's always a couple of ways to do these things. So if I jump across to this views drop down, I'm going to switch to data sheet view. And remember, we spoke earlier that whenever you make any changes, it's going to ask you to save. So I'm going to click yes to save. And I've now switched to data sheet view. So now that I'm in a different view, if I glance up at my ribbons again, you'll see that I have different contextual tabs now. So I still have table tools, but this time I have a fields tab and a table tab. 
Now the reason that I get different tabs when I'm in datasheet view is that in general, datasheet view is what you would go into to make changes, to add fields, things like that. Whereas in design view, we're really controlling the overall design of our table. So different things, you'll get different tabs. So you can see here in datasheet view, we now have those two fields. So we have ID and code, which is the one that we just set up. Now, if I wanted to add a third field, I could go across to where it says click to add. I can right click and I can select my data type. So I'm going to say short text and I'm going to call this field trip name. So essentially, I've now defined another field. Let's switch back to design view now. So I'm going to use my button in the bottom right hand corner. And you can see now there is my trip name. So I'm going to want to define some properties for my field. So I'm going to click on it. I can see my data type is short text, which I'm fine with. And if I look down in my field properties, again, field size, 255 characters. Now that should be plenty for a trip. So I'm just going to leave that. Do we require a name? Well, yes, we do. Every trip must have a name. So I'm going to change that to yes. Do we allow a zero length name? Well, that's going to be no. And do we want to index this particular field? Now, in this case, I'm going to say no, because in general, you wouldn't index text fields. Normally, if you want to find a trip with a particular name, you would expect access to go through the trips and find that particular one. So we're going to say no to indexed. So those are the basic settings for trip name. What I'm going to do now is put in a description. And that's my field set up. Let's jump back to datasheet view. And of course, I'm going to save my changes by clicking yes. And now we have three fields in the trip table. So hopefully by now you can see a pattern of setting up fields in the table. Now, one thing that we haven't done is add any data. And I'm going to add a dummy trip now to show you some of the things you need to be aware of. So each row is essentially a record in our table. So in our case, a trip. And we have a row here with a star and it says new. So that indicates that if I start typing in this particular row, I'm going to be creating a new trip. So let's set up a code for a new trip. So my code for this one is going to be LEX. So this trip is going to be called Louisiana. Explorer. And if you don't have enough room, you can drag this column in and out to make it wider or narrower. Now also note that I have a little pen icon in the farthest most left column. And that just indicates that this record is the one that I'm currently working on. Now this doesn't have all of the information that we need, but it's a very good start. So now we have three fields defined and I've added a row of data. In the next section, we're going to be adding more fields. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free Microsoft Access 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this Access 2019 playlist.